So knowing what I know now, what would I do differently if I was starting my cloud career today? Let's talk about it. So welcome back to the Cloud Computing Insider, where we talk about the truth of cloud computing and how to make it work for yourself. I'm your host, Dave Linthicum, author, speaker, at B-List Geek. Let's get started. So no, I'm not a giant narcissist. <laughs> this kind of came from uh, some questions I got from you guys uh, in terms of uh, people uh, looking to leverage my experience, which is like 30 years at this point, and certainly almost 20 years in the cloud game. Uh, a little more than that, I think, if you, if you add a lot of the uh, early internet stuff. Uh, about my career and mistakes I made, what I would do differently, uh, how to manage their career now in 2024, 2025. And I think it's a valid question. In other words, people are looking to get mentored by people who've gone through the, uh, gone through the process before, made mistakes, made successes, and that's certainly what I'm all about. So I'm happy to share them with you, and I have five that uh, kind of come to mind in terms of things I would do differently if I knew then what I know today. So let's get into it. So first is I would have jumped into cloud later. Uh, I got into cloud in the late 90s. I actually uh, wrote a uh, proposal to start a new business for a company I was working with at the time when I was a CTO about a cloud-based integration service uh, very much like what Boomi is now, and some other companies I've I've ran and uh, since then, uh, providing integration as a service because the internet was becoming a bigger thing then, and I thought, well, maybe I can provide message brokering services over the open internet. Wouldn't that be cool? Uh, ran around trying to get some funding for that. Nothing materialized, uh, and then I started to see growth around some other early cloud uh, cloud providers and the application service provider market or the ASP market was something that was kind of a thing in the late 90s, and some were growing pretty quickly, and they became the early versions of software as a service. So uh, software as a service was named by NIST. Uh, application service providers were really early versions of software as a service in the 90s, which uh, very early in the space, but they had some promise. And of course, uh, as soon as the 2000s started, there started to be a greater adoption of software as a service products. Salesforce, obviously, the poster child for that. But that was really the start of cloud computing. In fact, software as a service is probably the most popular version, popular way people are consuming clouds today. We don't just don't talk about it as much over AWS, Microsoft, and Google with their infrastructure as a service product. So I was all in on cloud computing then. And Certainly focused my career on it, uh, uh, went two stents as a CTO of companies that were probably not as cloud related, and then left them in the early 2000s to go work for some of the early cloud startups. And this is back in the time when no one cared about cloud computing. Certainly, Salesforce was starting to pick up steam, but as far as infrastructure as a service, integration as a service, a lot of the things you see around today that are huge industries uh, I was behind and trying to do some startups, uh, new uh, ventures, things like that. And, and there was pretty much no interest in it. So I spent a lot of my career churning in trying to get these things going because I jumped into cloud too early. And of course, it was probably 2008, 2009 when cloud computing first started to get traction. Uh, and then I saw some uh, inflection in my career. But it, it took a long time, uh, in that case, 10 years, uh, before it became really a thing where you could get a career behind it. And so if I was going to do it again, I probably would have held off, if I know what I know now, held off on focusing my career on cloud computing uh, until uh, uh, 2009, 2010, where everybody else jumped in and finally it was a market and you could get out there and make money uh, in that particular area. Either as a consultant, CTO, product developer, you know, the rest is history. We all know where cloud computing is these days. So the next regret or something I would do differently uh, is allowing business relationships to last longer than they should. And I, I think I have uh, this flaw in me. I'm, I'm very loyal to people who put their trust in me to start a business relationship, either as a, you know someone who's employing me or a client or uh, you know some sort of a partnership. And I have a tendency to let these things go well beyond uh, their logical or their, what should be their logical conclusion. 
uh, and run them in such a way where it probably would have been a good idea to decouple from that relationship earlier than I did. And so uh, a lot of relationships I had over the years, good relationships, people are still friends. I think I just held them too long. In other words, I created them for a particular purpose. Uh, when that purpose was over, uh, tried to maintain the relationship, maintain the business entity longer than it should have been there. So now I focus on seeing the writing on the wall and uh, making the call in terms of when to disconnect from some of these relationships and, and trying to do so in such a way where you're not trying to uh, alienate the other person or alienate the business. And sometimes this, that's difficult, but I think it's necessary for you to do. So I would have done that differently. So the next is going to be a short one. I should not have gone as much with the crowds and hype as I did. So I did follow a lot of trends, uh, certainly when I was younger. You know, service-oriented architecture, integration. Of course, I helped create that trend. Uh, distributed computing, you know, some of the web, uh, web-based web stuff and web development stuff that was occurring at the time. And I was really kind of running to get behind or in front of lots of the trends that were going out there. I probably did way too much of that. So I'm a little bit more skeptical when these trends come along. I always look for the value that is there for the enterprises. They're going to be able to leverage the technology or the people are going to leverage the technology. And, and if it's not there, I, I don't follow them uh, as tightly or as quickly as much as I did years ago. So I did learn that lesson, but it's something if I went back and knowing what I know now, I would not have done that. And by the way, that includes lots of trends that are occurring within cloud computing, uh, serverless, um, you know, certainly the microservice stuff. We talked about that a few videos ago. Uh, lots of things that people got behind. And lately, probably in the last uh, 10, 15 years, I'm, I'm very skeptical about those things. And I do look for the value in them. And when I was younger, uh, if it made sense for me to do something, I felt everybody else was doing it, I would follow it. And that was a mistake. So the big one is I would not have allowed myself to be bullied. Uh, you've been bullied, Dave. I think we all have been bullied. We've certainly been bullied at work, um, whether we know it or not, and you know, certainly our younger days, things like that. And I think in going through my career and certainly getting into cloud computing, we're talking about specifically things that are related to cloud computing now. Uh, in many instances, I took positions, wrote articles, um, you know, did podcasts, which uh, which were, were not necessarily uh, adhere to the narrative of the other uh, powers that be, the big cloud providers, the technology providers, the big consulting providers, things like that. And they would put pressure on me, uh, either directly or many times it was passive aggressive. They would go through my editors, they would go through my employer uh, to try to get me to you know change my mind on a particular topic and to back off a particular topic. Um, I didn't back off a particular topic. If I wrote something, I didn't pull it down. Uh, but I did notice myself uh, vetting things that I was doing um, to look out to make sure I wasn't uh, upsetting people out there that I felt were kind of bullying me. So, you know, for example, the Microsoft is Dead article, uh, Dead video I did uh, a couple of videos ago. That's a good example of that. Some people, you know, good to bring it up. Uh, some people, uh, I don't agree with you. And uh, there's always a bit of bullying around that kind of stuff. People go around, um, you know, go to go to people who sponsor me and go to people who employ me uh, and then put pressure on me that way. It's not really occurring that much now, but a huge amount of that stuff uh, occurred 10 years ago where I, I would it was constantly being concerned about who was going to be bullying me based on what I say. If I was going to do it now, a redo it now, I wouldn't allow myself to be bullied. I wouldn't think even think about it. So when I put out the microservices are dead video that I did a couple of videos ago, didn't give it a second concern. When I put out other articles that, that I do on LinkedIn, uh, don't give it a second concern. Uh, write about stuff on InfoWorld, don't give it a second concern. So if I feel that something that should be said, I go ahead and say it as long as I believe it to be true and something can help you guys and making decisions. So, you know, even my insider's guide to cloud computing, um, if you read through it, there's lots of things in there that kind of go against the narrative. And so uh, that's because I don't allow myself to be bullied anymore. I don't let other people dictate what I'm going to say. And certainly in the cloud space, that's the thing. There's lots of bullies out there. 
And uh, I think that I'm a much more happier person from that. Maybe a poorer person, <laughs> but, uh, you know, certainly a happy person. Other things I said that people push back pretty hard on with a cloud, easy cloud portability doesn't exist. I said that early on. Uh, everybody hated that, uh, that it was something that, uh, uh, you know, shouldn't be said that cloud portability was going to be built into the systems and it was fairly easy to port them from one system to the other. And there were some, uh, narratives going out there that if you move into cloud, you're, you're not necessarily locked into that particular cloud provider. That wasn't true. Called that out, got a lot of pressure and also cloud costs should be lowered. Uh, kind of saw the, you know, writing on the wall that, you know, people were paying, too much for cloud computing. Uh, that was a core narrative in my book and a core narrative now in terms of how we're leveraging cloud computing. That doesn't mean you shouldn't leverage cloud computing, but in many cases, it's going to be more expensive than the other alternatives, including uh, on-prem systems. So saying that was, uh, you know, got me bullied a few times. Again, years back, I don't think they do it these days because I don't even react to it. So and just like you do with any bully, you stand up to them and uh, they will uh, go away. Uh, pushed back on tech cloud providers. I got that pushed back from my employers or clients, you know. And in some cases, like I said, I held normalized some options, may have said some things or didn't say some things I normally would have said. That's long over. But if I was able to go back in a time machine, know anyone I knew now, um, I would not allow that to happen. I would not allow myself to be bullied. And so take that as a uh, word of advice. In other words, if you're starting a career, people push back on things you say and your ability to provide your own opinion. Uh, as long as you're not intentionally lying and you're telling the truth and it's something you believe, stand behind it. Because, you know, kind of that's all we have out there is our opinions. Um, and I think that ultimately people are going to respect you for that and they're going to... Uh, use you more, employ you more, uh, and trust you more. So that's kind of my philosophy. So I didn't do it too often, but uh, did it a few times, and the times I did it, I wish I didn't do it. And you're going to like this last one. Uh, I would not have been a bully, <laughs> which I was from time to time. It was some days early in my... Uh, in my 20s, you know, I was a guy, I was a kid who wrote, you know, a bunch of books and, and was getting published everywhere and was doing keynotes at conferences. And this is around the development space, you know, and object oriented development and structured analysis and design and case tools and, you know, all the stuff I got involved with early in the days. And I would end up working for some pretty cool and big companies at the time and uh, really kind of had the attitude that everybody needed to agree with me or else they were going to suffer my wrath. Uh, which was uh, not a good way to do things. As you know, when you lead people, that is never a good idea. Uh, that doesn't mean I was uh, um, overly aggressive with lots of people, but that means I didn't listen to people as much as I should. I didn't take their advice. Uh, I pushed back on their ideas when I should not have pushed back on their ideas, and that's never a good I That's never a good idea. Even if you disagree with somebody, you should listen to what they have to say. And so I always call myself back then Evil Dave, and of course, went through an evolution, got older, uh, humbled a few times, held some leadership positions uh, where I was accountable to lots of individuals that I had to treat kindly in order for them to do a good job for me. And so I understood that bullying uh, was not the way to motivate people uh, just because I don't I, I know myself. I don't like to be bullied. We just talked about that. Other people also don't like to be bullied. So I would have not have bullied people in the technology industry, people working for me, even people I was partnering with, even bullet, you know, um, you know, some of the other technology providers I was dealing with, because there really is no value in doing it. You're not going to be able to have a good working relationship with somebody if that's occurring. You're not motivating them. You're just alienating them. So obviously those are lessons I think a lot of younger people go through. did most of that in my 20s, uh, out of it by the time I was in my 30s. But if I look back, knowing what I know now, don't be a bully. And I urge you never to be a bully. And I'm never going to be a bully. Well, that's it for this week. A little different kind of a show, but I hope it helped you out. At this, uh, I'm getting a lot of questions about things like this. And let me know in the comments if you want me to continue on with things. We'll talk about technology next time. I like to balance things out. Uh, career stuff, you know, how to manage your career, uh, which technologies to focus on. Uh, how to deal with architecture, you know, how to run projects, you know, all these sorts of things are very important. 
I think, to people who are working in the technology space, specifically cloud computing. And I think it's important that we address some of the lessons learned so we can all do things a little better and be better people, uh, better employees, better employers, better bosses, better subordinates. And I think that's very important to make a lot of this stuff work. We have to have a very open and honest dialogue in how we're going to push this technology in the right directions to bring the most value back to the enterprise. And that's what we need to do. So anyway, don't forget to like and subscribe. Also check out my InfoWorld blog. Also check out my uh, uh, course out on Go Cloud Careers. Having a great lot of fun there. It's a fully mentored course with 30, 40 hours of videos. It's probably 100 hours of videos now based on the classes I have. Also LinkedIn Learning Courses. Have a lot of things dropping over the next few months. Really looking forward to that. And check me out on LinkedIn and check me out on X. And don't forget about my, my book, An Insider's Guide to Cloud Computing. And let me know what you think about that. So until next time, you guys stay safe. Cheers. Bye.